Hi everyone and welcome to video number seven on Weimar Germany and the rise of the Nazis. Now in the previous video ladies and gentlemen we were looking at the work of Gustav Stresemann as Chancellor of Germany and we saw how he tried to help the German economy to recover. Well, in that previous video I said Stresemann was a very busy man because actually he had two major jobs. After he'd been Chancellor of Germany in November 1923, Stresemann became Foreign Minister. And his job there was to try and recreate better relationships between Germany and all of the neighbouring countries in Europe. So this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at the three main steps, the three main things that Stresemann did as Foreign Minister to try and help Germany build better relations with its neighbours. Now, the old Australian soap, neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours. Well, of course they do. Everybody needs good neighbours. And in the words of the song, with a little understanding, we can find the perfect blend. But there is no real understanding between Germany and its neighbours after World War I. No, if you remember the Peace Treaty of 1919, Treaty of Versailles, Germany was punished by its neighbours. So Stresemann has got a big task here. His aims, they're quite simple. Build better international relations. That would help the German economy to recover and that would give political stability at home in Germany. He wanted to increase confidence, increase trust of the Germans in their own Weimar government. So what did he do? Step number one. We come to something called the Locarno Pact 1925. Now a pact is an agreement and it was an agreement between most of the most important countries in Europe. Germany, Britain, France, Belgium and Italy. They all got together and signed the Locarno Pact. And basically they're saying, look, we will all agree the existing borders as they are now drawn after the Peace Treaty of Versailles, we agree that those are the borders. No more arguments. For Stresemann, he's thinking, right, if I can get everyone to agree this, France in particular, because they're right next to Germany, France will feel more secure. And if France feels more secure, maybe, he's thinking, maybe France will have a better relationship with us, the Germans, and maybe they might agree to change some of the other things in Versailles, particularly the reparations. So that's what Stresemann is thinking. And in some ways it does work because the Rhineland, that strip of land just between France and Germany in Western Germany, the Rhineland was demilitarized, remember, and France are agreeing, we will pull out of the Rhineland. So it looks as if Stresemann is getting some concessions here. Another thing you've got to remember, because Stresemann is actually negotiating in the Locarno Pact, he's saying to the world and to Europe, look, Germany is now being treated as equals. Remember, the Germans hated the Peace Treaty of Versailles because they saw it as a diktat. It was imposed on Germany. Germany had no say at all in the Treaty of Versailles. They just had to accept it. Stresemann is now saying, well, look, we've moved on. Now we are negotiating with these other big countries. We have regained our position. So that's the first step. A lot of people did agree with what Stresemann was trying to do for Germany. Only the extreme parties, people like Hitler and the Nazi party, they opposed it because 
it's agreeing the existing borders from the peace treaty of Versailles. And Hitler and the extreme party said the peace treaty of Versailles is wrong. But on the whole, it's the first step by Stresemann trying to rebuild better relations between Germany and their neighbours in Europe. He'd already, if you remember our previous video, he'd already established better relations with America. Remember the American loans and the Dawes plan? Now he's looking to establish better relations back in Europe. That's the first one. And it was quite successful. Many people refer to it as the Locarno honeymoon. A nice time. Better relations had been established. Step one. Now, step two. I need one of my silly wigs. Here I am, Paul McCartney. Excellent. The Beatles, 1967. One of their great hits. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yes. Well, did Germany actually have any friends? Stresemann is trying to build better relations. He's trying to create new friendships. If you think back to after World War I and the Peace Treaty of Versailles, one of the punishments that Germany had to suffer or endure is that they were not allowed to join the League of Nations. This new club that emerged after World War I an attempt to get together and talk to try and solve problems. Germany was not allowed to join. They had been punished. But for the Locarno Pact to actually come into operation, Germany had to be a member of the League of Nations. So September 1926, Germany is given a permanent seat on the council on the League of Nations. In other words, Germany has returned. This is the return of Germany as a great power. It's a huge boost for the confidence in the Weimar government. It allowed Germany to negotiate the Young Plan, which again, as we saw in the previous video, was better for the German economy. So Germany joining the League of Nations as a permanent member, it's sort of saying, right, Germany is back. Germany is back. Hello. Hello. OK, this was another major boost for German prestige. People at home, the German people at home, they're thinking, wow, we've been through bad times. Remember, hyperinflation. Now it looks as if the economy is recovering. And now it looks as if Germany is recovering its prestige, its status as a main power. Step two, it looks as if Stresemann here is doing another good job. Was it popular? Yes, most German people were happy with this development. Some did oppose it. Any ideas who? Of course, the extreme parties. Because, any ideas why? They saw the League of Nations as closely allied to the Treaty of Versailles and the extreme parties in Germany hated anything to do with the Treaty of Versailles. But it's step two in the rebuilding. Maybe now Germany has got a little help from its friends. And in 1926, Gustav Stresemann was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He's been recognised internationally across the world. Germany is being readmitted to worldwide society. Step two. And the third and the final step. 1928, we have something called the kellogg briand Pact. Kellogg, as in the cereal, Kellogg's and Briand, B-R-I-A-N-D. Notice it's another pact, an agreement. And what we have here is Germany, again, negotiating, taking its place in negotiations. Germany and 64 other countries all agreeing a couple of things. Number one, 
the army should only be used for self-defense, not aggression. Well, if everyone agrees that the army is only going to be used for self-defense, there would be no attack. Can you see what they're trying to do? They're trying to create a better society after the horrors of World War I. So 64 plus Germany, some of the main countries are agreeing we're only going to have an army for self-defense. And they take it further and say, look, yes, there'll be disputes and arguments in the future, but we're agreeing, we're signing the pact that all future disputes should be solved by peaceful means. Germany is negotiating with its friends, its newfound friends. Things are not being imposed on them, like in the Treaty of Versailles. Again, it's a big step because it's showing that the Weimar government is now stronger and it seems as if it's more stable. Yet again, of course, the extreme parties won't like this because in their eyes, the kellogg briand Pact does nothing at all to challenge the unfairness and the injustices of the Treaty of Versailles. So they were not happy. But again, a lot of German people were happy with the kellogg briand Pact because there it is. There's the Kelloggs. I suppose you could say it led to better relations. Things were not as frosty. Count Frosty's... <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible joke. I won't do it again. You know me, I'm always telling bad jokes. I suppose you could say I'm a serial offender. <laughs> Stop it. That's enough. I apologise. Disgraceful. So, that's the third step. The kellogg briand Pact looking to solve things peacefully. Now, we've seen in this video the three steps that Straysman gets involved. Locarno Pact, League of Nations, kellogg briand Pact. What impact did these three steps in foreign affairs have on domestic policies back in Weimar Germany? Well, 1924 to 1929, five years. They are sometimes known as the golden era or golden years. There was more confidence in Weimar. Support for the moderate parties actually increased and support for the extremist parties like the Nazis decreased. I'll mention the actual figures more when we move on to section two and we're actually looking at the rise and development of the Nazi party. But as a general point, 1924 to 1929, Hitler and the Nazi party did not do very well because people's lives were getting better. In 1925, President Friedrich Ebert died. He was replaced by a World War I hero, Hindenburg. Many people liked that because it, they felt reassured that now the Weimar government had a strong character, a strong personality in charge, Hindenburg, this World War I general. Of course, remembering the United States loans, the economy was recovering. Thanks to the Dawes plan and the Young plan, reparations had come down. The Allied troops did leave the Rhineland early, years before the deadline of 1933. So you could possibly argue that Stresemann's work, both at home in Germany with the economy and abroad with his better relations with his neighbours and now friends, you could argue that Stresemann's work was going well. Things had improved for most people in Weimar Germany. Yes, there were winners. Yes, there were losers, which I will mention in the next video. 1924, 1929, the golden years. Could it last? What was Germany like in those five years? Well, stay around, tune into the next video, and we can find out what actually happened at home in Germany 
as a result of Stresemann's economic reforms and as a result of his foreign recovery. Relations had got better. Oh, I get by with little help from my friends. Well, it seems as if Stresemann was getting by with little help from his friends. Would it last? What's going to happen next? Tune in and find out. All the best. I hope it's been useful. Speak to you soon. Bye now.